Hello, this is Atsushi. I found it interesting to encounter the word Zoukin in browsing the photos of Sashiko. Zoukin is quite a common word for the Japanese, and I wrote the blog about Zoukin. On top of sharing the information, here is a quick tutorial of how to make Zoukin by yourself. Any kind of fabric would be fine for Zoukin. First, cut the fabric for the ideal size. Usually I prefer two layers of fabric to make them strong enough to clean, yet light enough to handle. There is no specific rule for Zoukin, so the size can be really up to your preference. I prefer the size of my hand palm so I can clean comfortably. The second step is about another preference you may choose from. Please check the website for the detailed explanation. In short, you may trim the edge of the original fabric for the less bulkiness, or keep the edge as is to protect the fabric from fraying. It is up to your preference. If you decided to trim the edge, and if you cut the fabric to your ideal size, you have an option to avoid fraying the fabric by stitching the edge and flip the fabric. Find which side is the front side, then fold it with front side facing each other. Then stitch the side and flip the fabric so the Zokin have the front side on the both side. I hope it makes sense. It is not necessary for the old type of the Zokin project, but this the process will protect the Zokin from fraying easily. Flipping the fabric is completely optional. It will make the fabric more durable and look less bulky. But stitching for size are also a good way to make zokin. The step of actual stitching is the most important point of making zokin. The more you make the stitching, the stronger the zokin fabric becomes. There is no rule or regulations what kind of patterns to stitch. However, for the purpose of making the fabric stronger, the geometric pattern with the straight lines would be the ideal pattern, such as the patterns I perform right now on this YouTube video, or a grid that has systematically stitched. As you may realize, this process of stitching for the purpose of making fabric stronger can be called sashiko. It was a very ordinary custom to repurpose the fabric, used fabric to make the cleaning rag. The Japanese used to say that we should keep using the fabric until the fabric dissolves in the water. Zokin is just the name of one form of fabric in its long life. The result of the continuous process of using the fabric, mending it, fixing it, and stitching it to make the fabric stronger or to stabilize the fabric is called borrow. Two main questions about making zoking would be one, is it have to be hand stitched? Two, do we use sashiko thread in making sash making zoking? It does not have to be hand stitched. Again, it is very much up to the preference. Personally, the way of stitching doesn't really matter because it is for the purpose of cleaning with old fabric. The most important concept here is repurposing. One big advantage of hand stitching is the durability of zoking. The bigger stitches made by hand will be more flexible in terms of tensioning the fabric in the water. The machine stitches can result in destroying the fabric over time. 
For the thread, any kinds of thread would be fine for the Zokin, unlike the other Sashiko project, to make jacket or bags. However, when you are thinking of making borrow looking fabric from Zokin and using the fabric as Zokin, which looks like a piece of fabric stood melting by itself, then Sashiko thread maybe, or probably is, a good choice. Generally speaking, the used fabric itself should start fraying before the new Sashiko thread. The regular sewing thread will snap sooner than the Sashiko thread, so it will not hold the fraying fabric. In order to make borrow looking fabric, Sashiko thread might be a good idea to use. More information is available about Sashiko, Boro, and of course Zoking on our English website upcyclestitches.com. Thank you for watching.